this is Nikki from Little Blue Artworks and welcome to the Needle Felt and Mini Whale tutorial. Okay, so looking at the tools we'll be using for this project, we're going to be using a needle felting pad. This one I've handmade myself and it's filled with organic buckwheat tusks and it's sewn up. Or you can use one of the self-fill bags where you can stuff it with rice and just pull on the drawstring. Also going to be using a needle felting needle. This is a medium sized needle, gauge 36. Comes with a very sharp point and it's triangular shaped with three barbs along each side of the triangle. These barbs face down towards the point and as you push the sharp needle through the wool, the barbs hook onto the fibres, agitating them as we push through. As we pull out and then push through again, the fibres begin to mat and this is the felting process. I'm also going to be using a small pair of needle felting glass eyes. These are size 3mm and in black. For the wool I'm going to be using some carded batting around about 5 grams and a small amount of white carded batting to make the water spout on the top. You may also want to have a pair of sharp scissors handy and possibly some clear dry tacky glue to stick in the eyes so that they hold inside your project. I also have a very thin piece of wire which we're going to use to hold the wool to make the spout for our little whale at the end. So we're going to begin our project with the turquoise wool and we're going to pop some of this aside to make the tail and the fins later. So around about one third of that if you just pull that and it should come apart quite easily and just pop that to the side. Now we're going to work on this larger piece of wool to make the main part of the whale and all we're going to do is felt this into a ball. So firstly I'm working on my felting mat here and I'm just going to find the smoothest part which is here of the wool and this will be the top. Pushing this down over my thumbs and my fingers round over the wool and over my thumbs will begin to make a small smooth part of the ball. Now taking the edges of the bit of the wool together to make a parcel shape, we now have a little parcel of wool which we can begin felting on the mat. And this will begin to hold together as we felt and start to shape into a small ball. Being very careful of the sharp needle and your fingers, you start to push through the wool and you can hear it crunching through the fibres and into the felting mat. A few stabs in and that part's beginning to hold so I'm just going to pick it up and turn it to another spot. Now I'm just going to felt down into this. Again being very careful of your fingers and thumb. A few stabs in and that part's beginning to hold so now I'm going to get these fluffy parts, push them down into the ball of wool and then felt them to hold them. Being careful of my finger. I'm just stabbing gently through the fibres until that part begins to hold and moving on to this part here, holding it together with my fingers and then stabbing again through the fibres so it begins to hold. I'm going to keep repeating this process and turning as I go, making sure to lift the wool off the mat because the fibres of the wool will stick to the fibres of the mat when you begin felting through the wool and into the mat. So you want to make sure to continue to turn it often. Now we have a ball shape. I'm just going to continue felting that all over to really have a smaller, denser shape of wool to work into our little whale. And I'm going to speed this part up. firmly felted ball of wool made with that gorgeous turquoise colour. If you find there's any parts of it which you're not keen on, maybe the texture is just a little bit too dented or it seems to have a crack in it, you can just pinch a little bit off the other smaller bit of wool we put aside earlier. Pinching that off and then just patching it over. Here I've got a small little messy bit. So I'll just patch that over this area and then just gently tap over that little patch and that will begin felting that extra piece of wool onto your ball and giving it a much smoother appearance. 
You'll notice here that I'm tapping rather than stabbing the needle far into the ball because we're just working on the very surface area of the ball at the moment and just working on the texture to bring that nice and smooth together. Now I'm going to work this ball shape to have a little bit of a ledge at the bottom so that it sits nicely and doesn't roll about too much. I'm going to pick what I think is the messiest area because then it will be hidden nicely. I'll just pick this side here and all I'm going to do is felt downwards in a circle to flatten out that piece of felt slightly so it's a bit less of a ball shape and it has a flat bottom to sit on. Notice that I'm holding the needle straight down at this point and not at an angle and just going methodically back and forth or around and round in circles in that area. And there I have the side of it that's more flat than the rest of it. It should sit nicely on the table without rolling around. Now popping this aside, we're gonna work on the tail. Now we're gonna take that last piece of wool and just pull it in half. Half of this will be for the tail and the other half for the fins. Popping one aside, we're first gonna start working on the tail. So we want a nice piece of flat felt for this. So I'm just popping that down flat on my felting pad and I'm going to give it a few very random stabs all over. This will begin to flatten out the felt and also make the fibres hold to the felting mat, making it slightly easier for us to work with. Now what we're going to do is make a fold in the piece of flat felt to begin to work in the shape of the tail. First of all, these fluffy ends, I'm just going to fold over this way and down. So we've got a nice edge to work from here. Then I'm going to use my finger to push in the middle here and just holding that down. And we've got a little bit of a tail beginning to happen here. So all I'm going to do is hold that shape by just gently stabbing through and down and that will begin to hold it. Now for this side here, we're also going to fold so we have a bit of an edge coming in this way. So there's our edge, just tapping along the edge there, back and forth to hold it. And then this part here needs to come into a bit of a point. So I'm just going to have a look to see both edges where they are and then I'm just going to stab it down and this will make a very rough point where I can then work into a tail shape. I'm gonna do the same with this side here. Folding it, stabbing it down so we've got an edge. And then this part here needs to be the same length. So I'm just pulling that down in length a little bit. Now I'm gonna start stabbing it into a bit of a point here. You can either do that by holding the fibres where they're meant to go and then just gently stabbing through or pushing the fibres very gently with the tip of your needle to where they want to go and then pushing down. This you want to be careful if you're doing because you don't want to break your needle which is very thin and delicate. So any bulky parts use your finger to fold and hold then felt down. Any smaller parts you can then just use the tip of your needle to move and then felt down to hold. This part here, I'm gonna have the needle coming in this way. This will then felt that little groove in between the two bits of the tail. So we can start to see that shaping up nicely. Now I'm gonna take it off my mat because it will be quite firmly held. So gently pulling. I'm gonna go on this side now, holding onto the fluffy fibers at this end. I'm gonna give it a little bit of a tap all over and just felt down these fluffy bits. And then this way again, just to really encourage that tail shape. Also gently tapping over the surface area rather than just stabbing through. Experiment with tapping on the surface as well as stabbing through. Now I'm going to pick it up and turn it over this side again. I'm just work over the shape once more. Now the more you felt, the firmer that shape will become and the nicer the texture will look on your little tail. Taking it off your mat from time to time so it doesn't stick too much onto the fibres of your felting mat. Okay, so now we have a little tail. I'm just going to felt it in this way a little bit to bring it in and this way a little bit, bring it in at this area here. 
felting in between again in the middle to make a little groove back and forth to make that line will also help the tail to stick up a little bit as well which is quite a cute look like that now just to attach it on so the whale with the flat part is going to sit on this bit with the fluffy bits that we haven't felted yet of the tail here and all we're going to do is pick it up and turn it over and felt those fluffy fibers through the tail and into the body of the whale. And this should be felted onto his bottom. Now we have the tail attached and he should be able to sit up nicely on his own on the table. He can further stab over the body now that it might be a little bit misshapen after attaching that. And just smooth it over slightly by tapping gently over the surface. Now we've got the tail on, we're just going to take that last bit of the turquoise wool and pull that in half. So we've got two bits left for the fins. Popping the whale aside, we'll work on one fin at a time. First of all, just flattening that down as before onto your mat. A few stabs will begin to flatten it out and the fibres will begin to hold to your felting mat. Now we're going to fold in two sides to make a triangle. This side first, and I'm now going to stab along that fold that I've just made. And then this side here, I'm going to fold that down and stab gently along that fold there. Now I'm going to take this off my mat because it's already sticking to the fibres of the mat and I'm just going to go over that little triangle once again. On the other side. I'm also going to felt in a little bit this way if I need to, just to really bring in the edges on this side so that it looks more of a little bit of a point. Now I'm going to do exactly the same with this other piece and I'll speed this part up. Now we should have two little felted triangles ready to attach onto our whale. However, they're rather large at the moment so I'm just going to peel off some of this extra wool that we don't need. Popping that aside, we can always use that wool to neaten up the texture of the skin of the whale if we need to. So now they're smaller pieces and easier to manage. I'm going to turn my whale upside down again to attach this on and I just want a little bit peeking out there. So nothing too big, I don't want huge great big fins coming out like this. So just pulling that under so it's got a tiny little bit peeking out the side like this and that will be perfect size for a little fin. So he's now upside down on the felting mat and I'm again felting through that piece of fiber and into the body of the whale to attach it. Being very careful of your fingers. Take your time. Exactly the same with this side here and I've got my fins facing somewhat slightly back towards the tail of this end. So looking at it from the top, I'm going to have it just slightly poking out like this one here, facing somewhat the same way and now I can attach it onto the body. Now everything's really nicely firmly attached onto the body. I'm just going to pop him back up on his belly and go over the surface a little bit. This extra wool here I can use to just really flatten out the texture of the skin of the whale. I'm just coming here on either side of the fin which just takes it down in size a little bit as well making sure that's still a nice firm ball to work with after all that attaching of other things. So all those fluffy bits just gently folded them over the area. Now I'm just going to tap over that whole area of the larger piece of the mate. Gentle tapping. If you don't have an extra piece of wool there, then you can still just do some gentle tapping over the surface just to bring down any bumpy bits and smooth out the texture of the area. Okay, so that's all the parts now on and now we're going to move on to working on the face of our little whale. Okay, so coming in a little bit closer now, we're going to have him on the mat facing us this way. You can see where my thumb is, this is just the very flat bit of the bottom of the whale. What we're going to do is make his mouth. So this is very close to the bottom of the whale, probably less than a centimetre up from the bottom is where we're going to start. I'm going to use the needle to make a mark and then map out where the line is going to be. Then we're going to join up the dots by felting along with the needle to make a groove inside the area. 
idea which will then suggest the mouth. So there's going to be the front and it's going to come around in about the same area on the side here and this side here as well. Then it's going to come around just that little bit more, one more, one more this side, just before the side fins. Then it's going to come up into a little bit of a smile. So it's coming up at a diagonal that way. And all I'm going to do now is felt along between these lines, which will start to make a little groove. And this will be this little, the lovely little mouth of her whale. Now look at that lovely little smiley face we've got going on there. So just go, again going over the groove to really encourage that look and I'm just doing very short stabs to get that groove in there and then we just need to add in the eyes so all I'm going to do is just punch a hole with my needle where it's going to go and I'm going to pop it just before the corners where it upturns at the end of the mouth and make a little felted circle in there that is where the eye is going to sit inside there and then in the middle of that little circle that I felted pushing the needle through to make a hole at this point if you have a little dab of glue I recommend using a clear dry tacky glue I use Bostic all-purpose glue for things like this and it dries very very quickly so I'm just going to take out the needle and pop it in the eye quickly before it dries Pushing it in and that's one end, neatening up around the eye a little bit there and we've got a very cute look. And I'm going to do exactly the same on this side. Just going to give it one more going over, neatening up the whole area again. Gentle taps for the surface. And there we go, there's our lovely little whale all ready to get his spout working. So for the spout, I've got this little tiny bit, very thin wire here, which I'm just gonna bend in half. And then this part here in the middle, I'm just gonna give it a few twists. So now we've got a part there where the two ends are together. I'm gonna push together this part here so it's really in coming into a point here. Then we're gonna add on some white wool and you need some glue to do this part. You can use pretty much any glue you have lying around for this. You can even use a, a glue stick like Pritt stick or such. I'm just gonna use my boss stick because I have it here handy and I'm just gonna glue that on. If you have a glue stick then you just stick that all over so it becomes a little bit more sticky. Then I'm gonna take my white wool here and just gonna pinch a very small amount off and start winding that around the wire. Winding that all the way to the top and then I've got some bits of wool left over which I'm just going to leave there. Twisting it a little bit at the end and I'm going to leave that to dry. I'm going to do the same with this side. I'm pulling the fibres of the wool as I'm twisting. This really helps to lengthen them out a little bit as well. I'm twisting at the end again. I've got some bits of glue there which I can just then push down with my fingers to help that stick even further. And then at the bottom here, I just need a little bit of glue, not all the way down, maybe about halfway. Pinching, small amount of wool again, and then just very roughly wrapping that around that thicker part of the spout. And this is going to be the water gushing out of our little whale. So it should look something like this, with this part here not so much covered in wool because this is going to go into our little guy here. So right at the very, very top, I'm going to start needle felting in with the needle a hole. So I've pushed it in and then I'm going in and out a few times. And I'm going in again and in and out a few times. I'm moving the needle around very gently and slightly to start opening up that hole. And if you have anything bigger that you can put in there, which is a doll's needle, a knitting needle, maybe a skewer, something like that, just to open up that hole a little bit more. And then we're gonna check to see if that fits in, which it does. And the best thing you can do is, if you've got glue there, to hold it in. And there it is inside. Now these two top parts here, I'm gonna have coming down over my thumb 
then into one part of the little spout of water coming in front of his face that way and then with the other side I'm going to also bend that over my thumb and have this part coming down that way. I'm just bending them until they look really good. And there we go guys, there is our tiny little and very cute blue whale. Needle felted with just one needle, some turquoise and white wool. You enjoyed this project. If you'd like to try any of my other projects, I have both tutorials and kits, both large and taster kits, on my website at littleblueartworks.com. You're also more than welcome to come and join my Little Blue Felting group on Facebook. You can also find me on Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, and YouTube. So come join me for some more felty fun soon. Thanks for watching. Bye.